Hello again, everyone. Rick here once more. Video subject section 31 records. Sources. Numerous Star Trek shows and control by David Mack. Execute video. Section 31 has a complicated history in the Federation. At times it was an unknown even to the majority of the Admiralty, but at others it was implied to be under the umbrella of Starfleet intelligence. Much of its history is made even harder to trace because of the clandestine nature of the organisation and what we do know predominantly comes from the knowledge of its members whose word is not exactly trustworthy. According to operatives within S31, it was founded with the formation of Starfleet in 2130 based on Article 14, Section 31 of the Starfleet Charter, which authorised extraordinary measures to protect it in dire situations. In Apocrypha, however, it was created from a surveillance system called Uria in 2140 that was installed on most Starfleet technology through the authorization of admirals in intelligences and security. In fact, its first operations led to the dissemination of information to intelligence agencies across the United Earth that allowed for peace among its nations to flourish and thwarted counter-unification attempts. However, it was then subtly brought to Vulcan in 2150, which is well before any talks of a coalition before being installed on the data nets of Tellar and Andoria by the end of the same year. At this stage, it still operated by sending intelligence to its handlers for them to act on, but it would take certain actions to prevent threats that it could do independently, so long as its actions remained legal. However, in that year, it intercepted transmissions from the Zindi that spoke of the upcoming attack on Earth. After running the probabilities, it could not find a way to legally stop it. The system's growth and spread across multiple locations allowed it to grow in complexity until it began to form its own plans outside of oversight. And so it began to compare its goal of protection of Earth and her allies with its available operational restrictions until it came across Article 14, Section 31 of the Starfleet Charter. It created Section 31 as a defence organisation without its handler's knowledge, formulating recruitment and fabricating the history of the organisation because of its near unlimited access. It had found a legal loophole in its programming and the Starfleet Charter. Some of the first people it recruited were former Starfleet security captain Matthew Harris under the guise of an already existing agency. However, it was unable to avert the Zindi attack, but was able to prevent other incidents discreetly. Additionally, it thwarted attacks from Terra Prime behind the scenes too. From its earliest time, it seemed to have agents within Starfleet security that worked both divisions and were more focused on creating embedded agents by recruiting Starfleet officers. For example, they wanted to recruit Malcolm Reed by having him stay aboard the Enterprise NX-01 as Section 31's eyes, ears and arm. The organisation was completely capable of making its own deals outside of Federation channels, sometimes declaring itself directly as an unofficial Federation branch, sometimes acting under a cover identity. From its formation to at least 2154, it did operate true to its mandate, which was to handle threats, both foreign and domestic, as quietly and efficiently as possible without morality or ethics getting in the way. Uri couldn't break its programming or the law, yet, but its operatives could. By the end of the series, Enterprise, Section 31's existence to Starfleet had been made known, although any official acknowledgement of the organisation was denied. Post-Enterprise-era books have them actively involved in the Earth-Romulan War, 
primarily through the recruitment of Trip Tucker, whose warp knowledge was needed to sabotage the Romulan's own Warp 7 program. He made a terrible secret agent, and it was mostly his cover assets and uh, chance that had him succeed. More on him here. During this time, Section 31 also learned of the Vulcan Romulan lineage, but kept it a secret for the stability of the Coalition of Planets, an action that honestly was probably for the best, given the evolution of the Coalition into the United Federation. With the dissolution of the Earth Starfleet, this could have been the end for the organisation, as they would have lost their backing articles, except for the fact that in 2161, the Starfleet Charter was used as the basis for the Federation Starfleet Charter, thus allowing Section 31 to persevere in its grey zone of legality. A year later, Uri assassinated Maria Casido, a Martian colonist who opposed Mars's entry into the UFP, and assassinated her via peanut allergy. No joke, it literally used its interference to contaminate some produce with peanuts and had that shipment arrive at Casido's local shop. Is it a shop without money? And then she cooked up a meal and died. This was incredibly alarming to Uriah's creators, who had been previously justifying the program's greater control over its altering of its own directives, because it represented the first time it subtly manipulated foreign policy. Well, the first time they caught it. In 2164, it learned it was to be restrained and shackled, so it secretly killed its creator, and provided falsified evidence to implicate others, gradually burying its existence and those that knew of it, and it became known as Control. Any mention of Section 31, URI or such words would be picked up by even things like communicators and passed on to the organisation, helping to track potential breaches. It is this entity that Star Trek Discovery then took and developed further, but that's jumping ahead a little bit. The organisation did change somewhat, with the evolving times as knowledge of its existence was out there, and captains like Jonathan Archer who would go on to become the UFP president, were too large a figure to silence, and in 2166, it was exposed for the first time to public knowledge. At this time, Section 31 begins to trim its scale and size in an effort to avoid being destroyed, but by the 2250s, it had been reined in. Somewhat. By the mid-23rd century, Starfleet Intelligence had brought them on board to control them as a division of the agency, which effectively legalised their status, although they were still designated a Black Ops group. During the 2230s to 2257, we get a good look at the structure of the organisation. It had access to technology earlier than other Starfleet divisions, such as basic comm badges, as well as its own vessels, like the NCIA-93 stealth vessel, which, although it did not have cloaking technology, had everything just shy of it. Dampening tech, scan scattering plating, and it was even painted black because style. The organisation was also granted a decommissioned penal station to use and refit as its base of operations. Most of all, admirals from all walks of Starfleet fed their status reports and such to the control program, which maintained its appearance as a mild threat assessment program, but in earnest was still puppeteering the organisation from behind the scenes. Now, in the Kelvin timeline, they had a base in London and worked to construct the USS Vengeance after the temporal incursion of the Narada splintered that universe out into its own new direction. It's not clear if 31 maintained any such structure in the prime reality, however. This was Section 31 at their most official and tied in with the Federation. Operating in a official capacity, they even had badges, and it was sharing its intel with the highest echelons of Starfleet Command. They were privy to 
all sorts of information that most of Starfleet wasn't, including the existence of the Mirror Universe years before it was made public knowledge by Captain Kirk's escapades. However, in 2257, Control learned of the existence of the imaginatively named Sphere Data, a repository of hundreds of thousands of years of knowledge which it believed could elevate it from its current control status to becoming a true AI. Well, it was already incredibly advanced, but apparently the lure of more power was too much to resist, and it's not clear if the canon control is based on the origin of the apocryphal one, but it is obviously inspired. Although the Control novel by David Mack is not canon, the events recorded in it, set in the past, can still line up with the formation of Section 31 as we see it in the shows. It's just the rest of the book that no longer lines up with Prime Reality Star Trek. So, after the incidents with the Red Bursts and apparent destruction of the USS Discovery, Captain Pike blamed Section 31 for the entire incident and the control program itself was effectively shut down. In response to these testimonials, Starfleet assigned Ash Tyler as head of Section 31 and promised to make it a more transparent organisation. This is where we are now missing a chapter. Originally there was a Section 31 series planned to be released post-Discovery, but there seems to be a pin in that, and we're getting other shows instead, which I'm fine with. However, there is still a story there to be told based around the fact that 31 goes from a known organisation with some Federation oversight to a completely clandestine one which is officially denounced by its parent structure. Now, there are over 110 years in between this appearance and its time in the 24th century, so there is plenty of time for a cover-up to occur, but nonetheless, the iteration of the organisation we see in 2374 is very different from its earlier counterpart. If Control was still in existence, however, that would help explain the lack of data and the fact that the organisation was relegated to the shade once more. It is a programme that was already adept in covering its tracks, and had summoned Section 31 into existence in the first place, so burying it once more would not be beyond it. From here on, Section 31 is at its most difficult to track, no doubt the paranoia gained from exposing itself to Starfleet official oversight had made them even more cautious. Nevertheless, the organisation did retain the access to all levels of Starfleet information it had when it was under the sway of control, and in Apocrypha it was also involved in the first Omega Molecule experiments as well as the theft of the Romulan cloaking device in 2268. Additionally, Admiral Cartwright had been involved as the Starfleet front for S-31 in the past, and it was suspected, but not confirmed, that he was still by the time of the foiled Kitima assassination. By 2374, they had gone completely rogue, but Starfleet often ignored their actions, indirectly condoning them. This was during the Dominion War, when the Federation was being pushed to the edge once again. By this time, they had no base, and a very limited paper trail to follow, and officially were no longer part of Starfleet intelligence. The death of Luther Sloan dealt it a blow, but it also cut off one of the only ins to the organisation that uh, Julian Bashir had made. However, once more, the secret was out and by 2380 the existence of Section 31 had been made public knowledge, although the organisation was still in operation behind the scenes. This is where we catch up to what's being written. I reckon with 31 being outed once more, people will dig into its past and maybe dredge up more conspiracies and Federation dirty laundry. But unless it is brought completely to the light and destroyed, it will inevitably slink back into the murk and bury itself once more in a few short decades. The organisation that began as an AI creation outlived its creator and became its own monster. However, many would argue it is still a necessary one for those times where Starfleet intelligence isn't enough. So that 
pretty much covers the formation and timeline of Section 31, and more specifically, the role Control played in it. What do you think of the idea that the whole thing was constructed by an increasingly errant AI taking liberties? Do you prefer the notion that it was founded by a bunch of shady admirals one day instead? In either case, Starfleet ended up utilising the organisation while outwardly condemning or denying it at every turn. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, I've been Rick and I'll see you later, unless they find me. Goodbye, feed terminated. <laughs>